Hi, this is Lawrence from Materialize Belgium. In this tutorial video, we'll talk about the 3D printing workflow. A typical 3D printing workflow follows these steps. Importing and converting the file. Fixing. Editing. Build preparation. Slicing and finally printing. Let's start with taking a look at the import step. In order to print a part, you need STL files. If you have native CAD files, you first need to convert them into STL files. This is because STL files can tell the 3D printer where the inside and the outside of the part is, unlike CAD files. If you'd like to learn more about importing and converting files, please see our tutorial on importing. The next step is fixing errors in STL files. Errors can occur due to design imperfections or during the conversion from CAD to STL. Fixing is a crucial step to avoid build failures and to print high quality parts. If you'd like to learn more about STL errors and how to fix them, please see our tutorial on fixing. A fixed file is ready to be edited and depending on the 3D print technology you're using, enhanced for printing efficiency and part performance. For example, you can hollow parts to make them lighter, or you can cut them into smaller pieces in case they are too big for your machine. If you'd like to learn more about editing and enhancing, please see our tutorial on editing files. After editing, you can prepare your build on a 3D representation of a build platform in your machine. Depending on the 3D print technology you're using, you can place your parts, give them proper orientation and generate support. For example, laser sintering is self-supporting, so you can nest your parts in 3D and pack them efficiently. The efficiency of packing is often directly proportional to productivity. For stereolithography, FDM and laser melting, the surfaces have a certain angle to the platform and are not self-supporting, and they will need supports. Supports are additional material that will be discarded after a build, and supports need to be post-processed to improve surface quality. Therefore, you need to consider carefully while deciding on the orientation of your parts and creating the necessary supports. Once you have prepared your build, this information needs to be converted into slices, contours and hatches that your 3D printer can read and process to create your parts slice by size. Magix Essentials covers the first three steps of this workflow, until build preparation. For the following steps, you need to use the software delivered with your 3D printer. If you upgrade to Magix RP, you can run the whole workflow in one software up to slicing. If you combine Magix RP with a build processor specific to your machine, 
You can even do slicing and hatching directly from Magic's RP. Thank you for watching this tutorial, and please make sure to check out our other tutorial videos. For further questions about our software, please don't hesitate to contact the support line of your nearest materialized office.